Navneet here. Navneet. Krishna is as soft as Navneet. Very soft. So imagine if you put chip rice in Navneet. <laughs> soft butter. It will be so painful. So Sudham was saying, no, I better not give this poha to Krishna. I will do a disservice to Krishna. I will hurt him. This poha is dangerous. <laughs> For Krishna, I will not give. So he was not offering Krishna the gift. So Krishna is asking, Kim Upayanam Anitam. What gift have you brought for me? I know Bhavi must have sent something with you. <laughs> and then he says, so then Sudama will think, Krishna, I cannot give the gift to you. It's too insignificant and it's too dangerous for you. Then, therefore, Krishna says that Uparitam Bhaktaihi Premna Bhuri Eva Me Bhave. That, oh, Sudama, don't worry. Don't think that your gift is insignificant. You're thinking your chip price is insignificant. That's why you're not giving it to me. Don't think like that. Even a small gift given by my devotee is bhuri. I consider it to be very big. Small gift given by my devotee with devotion, I consider it very, very big. Don't think that your gift is insignificant. Your gift is supremely significant for me. On the other hand, Krishna says in the fifth and sixth line, that na me toshaya kalpate abhakta uparitam. That if a abhakta, a non-devotee gives me bhuri, a big gift, I don't consider it anything. Small gift my devotee gives, I consider it to be bhuri. Bhuri gift, abhakta gives, I consider it insignificant. Krishna comes to Hastinapur. <laughs> Duryodhan engages the royal cooks in making more than chappan bhog. Jagannath has come, who likes to eat. Krishna, our Radhika Ranjan Prabhu is from the land of Jagannath and this home is also the home of Jagannath. <laughs> so Krishna is Jagannath. He likes to eat. He is Anna Purushottam. <laughs> Krishna, Krishna is Lila Purushottam. Lord Ramachandra is Maryada Purushottam. Shri Gaurachandra is Prema Purushottam. And Jagannath is Anna Purushottam. <laughs> he likes to eat Anna. So Krishna has come and Duryodhan <coughs> has employed the gourmet chefs of the royal palace to make so many delicacies with the best high class ingredients, expensive vegetables and fruits. Maybe he even had persimmon <laughs> in India, very exotic. What is that? Persimmon. Oh, persimmon. In India, it is very expensive because it's a rare. Rare fruit signs. So he had all these rare fruits and vegetables cooked for Krishna, Chappan Bhog, and invited Krishna. Krishna, please come and accept. And Krishna teaches philosophy to Duryodhan. He says, My dear Duryodhan, food can be accepted as a gift only under two circumstances. Either when someone is extremely hungry, dying of hunger, if I don't eat, I will die, or when someone offers with love. He says, you don't have love for me and I'm not hungry. <laughs> so bye. Bye-bye. I don't want your food. So he gave up Duryodhan's chappan bhog and went straight to the house of Vidur, who lived in a small hut. Even though he was related to the royal palace, but he chose to live a very simple life. He lived in a very simple house. He goes and Vidur was not even there. He was probably attending to some royal business with Dhritarashtra or something. So Vidurani was there at home alone and Krishna tuck, 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 knocks. She opens the door. <gasps> Krishna, Govinda, you have come to our house. You were supposed to go and eat in the royal palace. I heard so many cooks were cooking since early morning for you. You came here. He says, yes, Vidurani, I'm very hungry. Can you feed me something? <laughs> Seeing the devotion and eagerness of Vidurani, now Krishna gets appetite. He says, I am very hungry. Can you give me something? Come, 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 come. Please come, please come. But there was nothing at home. Just like Sudama. There was nothing at home. There were some bananas. In her excitement, she didn't even ask Krishna to sit. You are hungry. I must feed you something. I must, what is that? The only bananas. She goes to the bananas, peels them in her super excitement. She 
throws the banana and gives the gives the pin to Krishna. And Krishna is just looking at Vidura and he's such a pure devotee. And he's eating. He's eating. Oh, this is delicious. Thank you. Give me some more. She peels another banana, throws the banana, gives the pin. This is so delicious. And he keeps eating, keeps eating. And Vidur comes to know that we saw Krishna enter your house. So Vidur leaves his business and comes running home. He rushes home, opens the door, comes inside and he sees a pile of bananas. <laughs> and there are no skins. And he sees Krishna eating the skin of banana. And he chastises his wife. Oh Vidurani, what are you doing? You are feeding the peels. Even animals don't eat the peels of banana. What are you doing? Oh, I am so sorry Prabhu. I am so sorry. What did I do? And Vidur takes the last banana, peels it carefully, throws the skin and takes the banana and gives Krishna, take this. Oh, Vidur, I'm so full. <laughs> your, your wife gave me the best, best meal of my life. I'm so full. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Sit. Now let's sit and talk. <laughs> this is Krishna. A big gift given by non-devotee is nothing. But a small gift given with devotion means everything to Krishna. And we will see how that is so. Now look at the fourth verse, my dear friend. Srimad Bhagavatam, 10th Canto, Chapter 81, Verse Number 4. What is it? <laughs> Kids, you're surprised? <laughs> This is not Bhagavad Gita, this is Bhagavad Gita. It's the same Krishna. Same Krishna who is speaking this. Same Krishna spoke the same verse to his other friend. Both are friends. Sudama is friend, Arjun is friend. Now Sudama, even after hearing the previous verse, that small gift given by a devotee means everything to me. I consider it bhuri. Sudama is still not convinced. No, but still, this is, uh, this is not edible for you. It's too hard. Then Krishna says, Are, this poha comes under the category of Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam. I will eat it. Just give it to me. I will eat it. Our Acharya has gone transcendentally crazy writing purport to this verse in Bhagavatam. Mm -hmm. So they say, our Acharya have commented, and it is mainly Srila Sridhar Swami and Srila Vishwanath Chakradhi Thakur. They are saying, why Krishna is mentioning Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam? Because he got rice. So that comes under the category of Patram Pushpam Phalam Toyam. So Krishna is encouraging that, yes, I know you have got chipped rice. Come on, give it. I like to eat vegetarian food. Give it. Give it. Then Sudama may think that, uh, oh Krishna, but uh, this is really not tasty. This is not edible. You may be eating first class fruits and leaves, you know, like tulsi leaves, the best leaf that can be offered. That's what you accept. But this is chipped rice that has been begged and brought, you know, in a dirty torn piece of cloth. It's not fit for you. You look at just seeing your opulence. I'm ashamed. I even brought this gift for you. This is not meant for you. That's why Krishna says, Patram Pushpam Palam Toyam Yome Bhaktiya Paranashati Tadaham Bhakti Ruparitam Ashnami Pratatmana. Our Acharya said that Krishna said Ashnami means I will eat if offered with devotion. What will I eat if offered with devotion? A leaf, fruit, water and do we eat flowers? <laughs> if I give a jhandu full, will you eat it? No. If I give you a mogra flower, will you eat it? No. We don't eat mogra, right? Krishna said, I will eat a flower. To encourage Sudama, that Are Baba, if you give me devotion, I will even eat an inedible flower. Come on, poha is edible. Give it to me. Our Acharya said like that. This is what Krishna means by saying, Pushpa Mashnami. I will eat even a flower if we offer with devotion. What to speak of poha? Come on, give me the poha. Quick. <laughs> this is the hidden meaning. And then another comment our acharyas have made, Tika. So then Sudama asks, Acha, you will eat even a flower? Did those flowers offered with devotion by a devotee? Yes. And if someone offers you first class patram pushpam falam toyam without devotion, then then Krishna says, I will not accept. Then I will not accept. I will only accept if it is offered with devotion. That's why when we offer, we chant Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimate, 
Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanam. And once my spiritual master, Shil Radhana Swami Maharaj, was asked that, Maharaj, really does Krishna eat? When we just chant these three mantras three times each and Krishna eats, Shil Radhana Swami Maharaj says, not even three mantra. When you say first time, Namam Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya, Bhutale, Shrimate, Bhakti Vedanta Swami Nityanam, Krishna has already eaten. Just by hearing Prabhupada's name, my Guru Maharaj said like this. Because Prabhupada is such a such a pure devotee, such a pure devotee that when Krishna hears, oh, this devotee is offering on behalf of my beloved Prabhupada. Come on, I will eat it. <laughs> Bhakta er, Bhakta Janapriya. Maharaj said, first time when you said the first line of the first mantra, Prabhupada Pranam mantra, Krishna has already taken. Just hearing Prabhupada's name. Such a dear devotee of Krishna. Chila Prabhupada. Krishna Prashtaya. He is very dear to Krishna. Hari Bol. <laughs> so, our uh, Krishna is saying, Patram Pushpam Phalam Poyam. I will eat even a flower. Give me that poha. Poha is much better than flower. <laughs> but because you are offering me devotion, I am eating it. But, but, Sudama is still not convinced. Krishna, if you are hungry, and if you want to eat something with devotion, is Rukmini Devi not cooking for you? <laughs> is Satya Bhama not cooking for you? Go eat food cooked by them. Forget this poha. This is not meant for you. <laughs> then Krishna will take matters in his own hand. Next five. Hare Krishna. It ukto pi dviyas tasmai Vridata pataye shriyaha Prithuka pristim rajan Na prayat chad avan mukhaha So he was still embarrassed of the palm full of flat chipped rice that he had brought because he saw Krishna as Shriyapati. He is Lakshmiji's husband. Lakshmiji cooks in the Vaikuntha kitchen for Krishna, serves on a golden plate with all the Vaikuntha attendants reciting Vedic mantras as Krishna sits as Lord Narayan, Shripati, and he enjoys food cooked by Lakshmi. And here, there is no golden plate. There is a cloth, old torn cloth, and there is no nice cooked, it is raw chipped rice. So Sudama looks down in shame. I cannot, I cannot give this. But Krishna says in the uh, commentary, Srila Vishwanath Chakra Thakur has said, Krishna says, but Sudama, you must give it to me. Krishna says, no, I will not. Uh, Sudama says, no, I will not give. Krishna says, Sudama, give it. Give me the chipped rice. Sudama says, no, it's not meant for you. You go eat food cooked by Shri, by Rukmini ji. Not this. Then Krishna says in the uh, Tika, Krishna says to Sudama that, listen, Sudama, my nature is Satyam Vidhatum Nijabhritya Bhashitam. Whatever my devotees think, I make it come true. Whatever my devotees say, I make it come true. Your wife gave you this chip price and said, give it to Krishna. Offer this to Krishna. Because your wife said, offer this to Krishna, I will eat that rice. Because your wife has said, and because you also thought at one point that I will go and give this to Krishna. That's why you brought it. Now looking at my opulence, you have changed your mind. But once at one point, you said that this chip rice will be offered to Krishna. It is my nature to make your and your wife's words come true. So I must have it. And I will have it. Give it. So this is the tug of war going on between Sudama and Krishna. And Sudama looks hangs his head down in shame. Then, <clears throat> being the direct witness in the hearts of all living entities, Lord Krishna fully understood why Sudama had come to see him. He thought, in the past, my friend has never worshipped me out of desire for material opulence. But now he comes to me to satisfy his chaste and devoted wife. I will give him riches that even the immortal demigods cannot obtain. So, Krishna is looking at Sudama. Sudama is hanging his head down in shame. Not giving the chip price. Looking down in shame. And Krishna is thinking, Are Sudama, all your life you have lived a life of poverty. You never asked me for anything ever. Today you have come to ask me for something. To satisfy your wife. 
you didn't want to come and ask me for material benedictions but your wife insisted and your wife also insisted selflessly because she could not see you suffer in poverty just like chaitanya charitamrit maharaj pratap rudra wants the mercy of mahaprabhu mahaprabhu says that you know he is a nice yadyapi pratap rudra sarva gunavan tahara malina kaila ek raja naam mahaprabhu tells that yadyapi pratap rudra sarva gunavan i know that pratap rudra maharaj is gunavan he is a very nice rajarshi he is a king but he is like a rishi yadyapi pratap rudra sarva gunavan tahara malina kaila ek raja naam but he has been made polluted by that title upadhi raja raja pratap rudra as a sannyasi i cannot mix with kings royalty no because bhakti means sarva upadhi vinirmukta tat paratvena nirmalam but he has got that upadhi tahara malina kaila ek raja naam therefore tat paratvena nirmalam giving a upadhi means you become nirmal tat paratvena nirmalam rishikena rishikena sevanam bhakti ruchal so because i cannot meet pratap rudra because he is king he has got a title Maharaj Pratap Rudra. I will not meet. So then, Ramananda Raya, Saroho Bhattacharya, Nityananda Prabhu, they all come and they petition Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, give audience to Maharaj Pratap Rudra, give him your mercy, give him mercy. So then, to satisfy them, Mahaprabhu says, okay, okay, I will give. And then he gives mercy after hearing Gopi Gita. So, devotees para dukha dukhi, and when a devotee is heartbroken other devotees petition to lord for that devotee that how we pray for devotees when they are going to difficulty then krishna listens to the prayers like that so <clears throat> here um sudama came to satisfy his wife wife made that request to satisfy sudama because she could not see sudama suffer so let's see how the uh, devotee cycle is we are always para dukha dukhi not swa sukha sukhi <laughs> para dukha dukhi and para sukha sukhi when pratap rudra maharaj got mahaprabhu's mercy all the devotees became very happy pratap rudra ra bhagya dekhi bhakta gan raja re prashamsa sab anandita man <laughs> all of them became very anandit very happy when they saw that pratap rudra got the mercy and embrace of mahaprabhu that is the nature of a devotee so krishna is thinking to himself Shri Vishwanath Chakra Thakur has written a commentary to this verse. Krishna is thinking to himself, looking at Sudama. Krishna is saying to himself, "What have I done? This Sudama never prayed for any material benedictions. Why did I keep him in such such a nice devotee? Why did I let him suffer in poverty? As Krishna, have I failed? What did I do? My devotee should I have said Yoga Kshema Mahamyam, Ananyas Chintayan To Mam, Ye Jana Pariyupasate." तेषा नित्याभ्युक्ता योग क्षेम वहां अहम आई विल कैरी वॉट दे नीड एंड कृष्ण इज थिंकिंग चक्रवर्ती पाद इज रिटर्न लाइक दिस कृष्ण इज थिंकिंग इज ओन वर्स अन्य चिंत चिंत इज एंट सुदामा अन्य भक्त कृष्ण ये अफकोर्स ही इज माई अन्य भक्त ओ देन वाई डे नॉट प्रोवाइड हिम थिंग्स वाई डे नॉट प्रोवाइड हिम फेसिलिटीज वाई डे नॉट प्रोवाइड हिम मनी ऑल दीज इयर्स वाई डे आई अलाउ हिम टू सफर इन पॉवर्टी then krishna himself gives the answer oh okay 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 yes he is a ananya bhakta but there are two types of um renounced devotees now listen carefully krishna is saying there are two types of renounced devotees one is who are um completely averse to material opulence they detest material opulence they are disgusted with material opulence and there are devotees who are indifferent to material opulence there are devotees who detest material opulence and there are devotees who are indifferent to material opulence two types of virakta bhaktas two types of renounced devotees and krishna says jana bharat belong to the first category where he detested material opulence he hated it he didn't want it so i didn't give him and then there is second category of renounced devotees who are indifferent krishna if you want me to live in the palace i will live in the palace krishna if you want me to live under a tree i will live under a tree example is pralhad maharaj he was indifferent whatever you say krishna whatever you say i will do so krishna gave him 
became made him the king after Hiranyakashipu. He made him the king of the whole world. So two types of renounced devotees. One are averse to material opulence and one, one type is indifferent. Those who are averse, Krishna will not give. Krishna will keep them in poverty because that's what they want. And those who are indifferent, Krishna may give sometimes. So Krishna says that till now, Sudama wanted poverty. He belonged to the first category, Sudama. And therefore, I did not give him anything. I kept him poor because that's what he wanted. He wanted to be completely poor so he could totally depend on me. That's what Krishna did. He kept him like that to please him because that's what would have pleased Sudama. Krishna says, oh, but now Sudama has had a change of heart. Now he has become second category because of his wife's request. Till now he never asked, but now he has come to ask, which means he's in the second category. Now he, because of his wife, to please his wife, he has come to ask, but out of embarrassment and humility, he's not asking me for anything, but I know what he wants and I will do the needful. Krishna is thinking like this in this verse. I will do the needful. Then in verse number eight, it <clears throat> ambichintya, Vasanaj, Chira Badhan, Vijan Manaha, Chira Badhan, Vijan Manaha, Swayam Jahara Kim Idam, Iti Prithuka Tandula, thinking like this, that now he has come to receive my blessings. And although he's so embarrassed, I will take that chip rice from him. He is not giving, so I will take. I am sure after all. Chauragra Gandhiam, Purusham Nanami. So Krishna came to his, his stealing activities. He is, uh, he is Makhanchor. He is Chittachor. He is Chirachor. He is Pohachor. <laughs> He's Pohachar. He's going to steal the chip rice now. So what did he do? Thinking like this, Lord Krishna snatched from the Brahmana's garment the grains of chip rice tied up in an old piece of cloth and exclaimed, What is this? Kim Idam! What is this? Aha! I found it! What is this you are hiding? What is this? Actually, something very sweet happens here, but I will explain it after the next verse. Text 9. Nan etad upanitam me Nan etad upanitam me Parama prina nam sakhe Parama prina nam sakhe Tarpayant angamam vishwam Tarpayant angamam vishwam Ete prithukat Tandula. Krishna tells Sudama, my friend, you, ah, have you brought this chip rice for me? Is it for me? It gives me extreme pleasure. Indeed, these few grains of flat rice will satisfy not only me, but also the entire universe. Yasmin Tushte. Jagat Krishna. If Krishna is satisfied, the whole universe is satisfied. So, Krishna snatches that chip rice <laughs> from Sudama and our Srila Prabhupada's beloved disciple, Srila Radha Govinda Das Goswami Maharaj, he narrates in this Leela his own reflections, his own realization. Srila Radha Govind Maharaj shares his realization. He says that Krishna had actually uh, Sudama, Krishna was looking. Where is the gift? Where is the gift? I know you got a gift. Where is the gift? Krishna is scanning him. Where is the gift? So Sudama became very conscious that oh, he will see, he will take it. So Krishna, so Sudama hid the, uh, the uh, cloth bag of uh, chip rice in his armpit. So that Krishna will not fit. What I what 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 gift? No, I don't know. No, I don't I don't, I don't have any gift. He did like this. But Krishna knew exactly where he did. with his X-ray vision, Krishna could detect. <laughs> he could not get past Krishna's uh, homeland security. <laughs> Krishna found that he is hiding. And Krishna straight reached out in the armpit and pulled out the chip rice. 
Shila Radha Goy Maharaj says. But Sudama was so embarrassed and he didn't want Krishna to get, 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 get that dirty sweet, that chipped rice. So he, he held Krishna's hand. He was skinny little Brahman Sudama. And Krishna is... <laughs> Ananta Brahmanda Nayak Purushottam Bhagavan Krishna. He is the one who fought with Hiranyakashipu and ripped him to pieces. <laughs> that is Krishna. And this little skinny little Sudama Brahman, he is struggling with Krishna. He is holding Krishna's hand. No, no, you cannot have it. Krishna, you cannot have it. Shri Radha Maharaj describes. And in that China Japti, in that tug of war, the bag opened up and all the chip rice fell on the floor. And Srila Radha Govimara says, Krishna picked up the chipped rice from the floor and ate it. Armpit, then floor, <laughs> and then ate it. Hari <laughs> This is our Krishna. Hmm? And he says, this chipped rice has satisfied me, not only me, but the whole universe. This is the thing, my dear friends. In this world, yesterday... Ajita Narayan Prabhu, Ratma Radhika Mataji, Radha no myself, in Maithili also. <laughs> we, were, we were discussing a story that Srila Prabhupada tells about the father and son who buy a donkey from the market and they are walking home. So they think, okay, this donkey is an um, animal of labor, but you know, we are two of us and you know, we are a little heavy. It will be too much for the donkey. So let's just walk with him. So the three of them are walking, the donkey and the father and the son. And as people in the market, they are passing by, they start criticizing. Oh, what a, what a foolish father and son. Dio. What, what fools. They have a donkey to carry them, but still they are walking. Oh, then they, they, they hear that criticism, they look at each other. Okay, maybe we should sit on the donkey. So both of them sit on the donkey. And the people look and they start criticizing. Prabhupada tells the story. People start criticizing. Oh, how cruel. How cruel. Poor donkey. It is supposed to carry only one person and both of them have are sitting on the donkey. Oh, poor donkey. Let's call Peter. <laughs> so again, they get very scared. They climb down and say, oh, this is not good. You know, both of us should not sit. The father says to the son, son, you sit. You sit on the donkey. I will walk. And they walk some distance. Again, people start criticizing. What a shameless son making the father walk. And he himself is sitting on the donkey. Oh, the son jumps down. Oh, father, father, this is not good. Father, you better use it. You sit on the donkey. I will walk. They walk some distance. Again, people criticize. What a shameless father. What a heartless father. He's making the poor child walk. And he himself is sitting nicely on the donkey. Parupa says the moral of the story is no matter what you do, you cannot satisfy everyone. There will be some people who will criticize you. Krishna is saying, but if you satisfy me, you don't have to separately endeavor to satisfy anyone else. Everyone will be satisfied ultimately if Krishna is satisfied. And in this regard, in the Srila Gaur Govind Maharaj, in his book, Mathura meets Vrindavan. Mathura meets Vrindavan. Srila Gaur Govind Maharaj. He tells the story. Thank you. He tells the story. <laughs> Talking about the chip rice, my nose is watering <laughs> instead of mouth watering. <laughs> Sorry, Sharira Vidya Jal. What to do? This body is a network of ignorance and problems. Hare Krishna. So, uh, Shila Gaur Govind Maharaj writes in the book Mathura Mits Vrindavan the story from Mahabharat that Duryodhan was so envious. He was such a Vaishno Dveshi. He was such a envious fellow that he could not even tolerate the Pandavas living peacefully in the forest. When they were in Kamyavan, the Pandavas took shelter of Braj, Braj Bhumi. They spent maximum time in Kamyavan in their uh, 12 years of forest exile. And he would send spies to find out what Yudhishthir and his brothers are doing and Draupadi is doing. The spies came back and they said, when Yudhishthir Maharaj was banished to the forest, so many Brahmanas and Rishis from Hastinapur left with him. And they have been with him throughout their exile in the forest. So right now they are in Vrajbhumi. They are in Kamyavan. And he has a small ashram. 
and all these rishis and sadhus they live around him and every day they come together and they do yajnas and draupadi has received this akshay patra from surya dev and she can feed these thousands of brahmanas and rishis who come and yudhishthir maharaj personally serves all of them draupadi ji cooks the four, five brothers serve all of them and when everybody is satisfied and eaten then they sit and eat and then draupadi eats and then she washes the plate and they eat only once a day in their forest exile and then all afternoon and evening they are sitting and they are talking about krishna they are discussing krishna katha and yudhishthir maharaj was already very wise staying with the sadhus and rishis he has become even wiser now now his knowledge of the shastra has even increased and he has become very very philosophically wise and very great discussing hari katha with whom is he discussing hari katha oh ho oh, oh. ho their gurudev dhamma rishi is with them speaking hari katha and great sages like markande rishi came the other day and for many days he was doing hari katha with the pandavas duryodhan became so envious that how come this pandavas they are supposed to suffer in the forest they are supposed to eat some fruits they are supposed to starve sometimes in the forest and the surya dev surya narayan he has given akshay patra to them and they are having chappan bhog every day in the forest i must do something what can i do but i can't even attack them that bhim is there that's what is there I can't even attack them and you know they are in the forest i said i'm not supposed to do anything to them let me indirectly get them cursed let them get cursed so he invites durvasa muni to hastinapur and he works so hard he works 24/7 all the three shifts he is working because he knows durvasa muni is very difficult to please but if he is pleased he will give you amazing blessings and if he is displeased he will give you the worst most terrible curse also so ramayan um, so mahabharat describes duryodhan he took everything in his own hands he personally started serving durvasa muni he didn't want to take the risk he will tell his younger brothers and they will mess it up or he will tell some servants and they will mess it up the whole hastinapur will get cursed no 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 i am the best i will serve myself i cannot trust anybody so like a menial servant like a puppy dog mahabharat describes he was running around durvasa muni as long as durvasa muni was in hastinapur and durvasa muni stayed for many days in hastinapur <laughs> shila vyasdev describes durvasa muni's dinacharya he would wake up and he would tell uh, duryodhan cook for me and my 60000 disciples so so then duryodhan started his mega kitchen in hastinapur <laughs> he was helped by the cooks but he was himself doing everything he was cooking for durvasa muni and his 60000 disciples and he would make the feast ready with great labor and he would come to durvasa muni muni maharaj muni var prasadam is ready please come and he would say oh now i have to go to yamuna for snan i will go but by the time i come the food will be cold so cook again so he would go for yamuna snan and then come back in the afternoon and then again all the time duryodhan is cooking and he has spies tell me when he is coming so i'll serve him hot and he would come and he would say oh don't you know today is my day to fast i will not eat now i will do my meditation don't disturb me and he would sit at meditation and mahabharat actually describes duryodhan is sitting there when will his meditation get over when will his meditation get over and it would be night time and duryodhan would fall asleep so durvasa muni is meditating and here is duryodhan tired he he has not eaten anything he is tired and he is like lying down on the ground flat and at midnight durvasa muni is meditating with end and say duryodhan you fool you are sleeping in front of me where is the prasad come on sir me and in the middle of the night duryodhan would wake up wake up the royal chefs and again the mega kitchen is alive <laughs> and he's cooking and then he would serve he would serve durvasa muni and his 60000 followers like that for many weeks duryodhan sleepless foodless he served durvasa muni only with the intention that he will be somehow pleased with him one day durvasa muni called duryodhan duryodhan come my dear child i had heard you are a very nasty fellow but but my opinion of you has changed you are very submissive you are very docile you have a very nice service attitude i am very pleased with you ask me for any benediction and i will give it to you <laughs> duryodhan said 
He failed innocence. He said, "Oh, Munivar, I served you selflessly. I don't want any benediction from you, Munivar. I served you just to please you." Ahay, tu kya prati hata? But if you really want to give me a benediction to please you, I will ask for benediction. But Munivar, I don't want anything for myself. You see, I am very selfless. I don't want anything. Serving you, Durva Samuni, was the highlight of my life. I enjoy doing selfless seva, and I love my Panda brothers. I want them also to get the same fortune. So I don't want anything for myself. But if you so please give me this benediction, that give seva opportunity, service opportunity to my dear brothers Pandavas who are suffering in the forest. they don't have any association please give them your association and give them a chance to serve you then they will experience the bliss that i am experiencing durvasa <laughs> muni said all right i'll go right now no 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 now is morning time not now not now uh, they must be busy chanting their rounds <laughs> you go late in the afternoon you go late in the afternoon that is the best time because he had heard from his spies that in the afternoon draupadi washes the akshaya patra and then it can produce no food till surya dev rises the next day akshaya patra given by surya dev he said no you go in the evening when the sun is about to set that time you go when the sun is setting you go that time so that there will be no food and it will draupadi loves to cook for sadhus so you go and you ask her i want to eat i am hungry go there when you are really hungry munivar durasan said okay if that's the benediction you want i will it will be so that evening when the afternoon was ending and the evening was starting yudhishthir maharaj and his brothers and draupadi devi they are sitting and they are discussing krishna katha and suddenly durasan muni comes from the forest he just appears in front of their kutir with the 60000 disciples in the kartika there were 10000 60000 disciples they come and they tell yudhishthir maharaj yudhishthir maharaj gets up offers his obeisances all the brothers they offer obeisances they welcome durvasa muni how may we serve you durvasa muni says we have come here very hungry you have come here very hungry and it is our desire that you feed us sumptuously it is evening time the sun is setting it's time for our bath we will go to yamuna ji we'll take a bath we'll chant our gayatri and then we will come keep the prasad ready we will come back in maybe half an hour <laughs> keep the prasad ready <laughs> durva sapni left to take his bath i will be back in 30 minutes the time starts now <laughs> You just see us. Hey Krishna. He comes inside, and Draupadi Devi looks at him and says, "Why has your face lost all color, Pati Devi? What happened?" Vidushchand Maharaj tells Draupadi, "You have to cook for sixty thousand and one hungry sadhus in thirty minutes. <laughs> A sumptuous feast." Draupadi said, "But I have already washed the akshay patra. No food will come till tomorrow morning." Vidushchand said, "Till tomorrow morning." All five of us, your five husbands will be dead. Durva Samun is not going to wait for for sunrise. He wants the food now. And Yudhishthir Maharaj sits down, holding his head. All the four brothers they sit down. What do we do now? Draupadi Devi enters the kitchen, looks at the akshay patra. It's empty and washed. She closes her eyes. And Sri Bilva Mangal Thakur in Govinda Damodar Stotra says, "What prayer Draupadi ji offered? Durva sa sova kya mupeta Krishna sa cha bravit ka na na vasimi sham anta pravista manasa juhava." Govinda Damo Darmada Beti Durva Sasova Kya Mupeta Krishna 
साचा ब्रवित कानवासिनीशम अंत प्रविष्ट मन साजुहाव गोविंद दामो धर्मी गोविंद गोविंद हरे गुरारे गोविंद गोविंद मुकुंद कृष्ण गोविंद गोविंद रथांग पाणे गोविंद दामो धर्मी गोविंद दामो धर्मी गोविंद दामो धर्मी गोविंद दामो गौर गोविंद स्वामी महाराज डिस्क्राइब्स दट द्रौपदी कॉल्ड आउट कृष्णा गोविंद दामोदर माधव प्लीज हेल्प मी चल गौर गोविंद महाराज से द्रौपदी प्रेड दट कृष्णा प्लीज कम हियर राइट नाउ अनलेस यू कम दिस कैलामिटी के नॉट बी सॉर्टेड आउट and my guru maharaj shila radhanath swami maharaj says in a class this calamity was a greater calamity than the calamity that came upon draupadi in the kuru sabha hmm. shila radhanath swami maharaj says the reason is in kuru sabha her modesty her reputation her life was at stake but in this situation the life of our five husbands was at stake which was a greater calamity for draupadi in draupadi's heart this was a greater problem greater crisis situation than that situation in the kuru sabha this is a vaishnav draupadi was more concerned about her husband's welfare than her own welfare hari krishna and she with such eagerness she called krishna that in the kuru sabha krishna appeared in a invisible form but here Shila Gaur Govind Maharaj writes in the book Mathura Mits Vrindavan when Draupadi called Krishna Krishna came running he came running and he did, did not even ask Draupadi what the problem was he just came running and said Draupadi it's dinner time i'm hungry <laughs> <laughs> Draupadi was saying Krishna 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 and Krishna was saying food 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 <laughs> give me food and Draupadi chastised Krishna Stop your cruel jokes. You know there is no food. <laughs> What food you are asking? And Krishna, no, there is food. There is no food. I already watched the Akshay Patra. Krishna says, "Show me the Akshay Patra. Bring it to me." And Drush, see, I have watched it. Now, when we wash vessels in the kitchen, we are careful. Because what Prabhupada said is, "Wash the dishes nicely. You are cleaning your heart." So we are very careful. Now Draupadi ji, Sri Mahabharat describes that she is a partial incarnation of the goddess of fortune. You can imagine how nicely she would have washed the Akshay Patra, hmm? spick and span. But Krishna picked it up, and there was a small piece of spinach, spinach leaf. Patram was there. Patram pushtam palam. A spinach leaf was stuck on the underside of the Akshay Patra, and our Acharya say. Krishna planted it there. <laughs> there is no way Draupadi could have left a spinach. We don't do it. How Draupadi will do it? She is so meticulous. So Krishna only planted the leaf <laughs> and said, "Draupadi, look on your Akshay Patra. There is a piece of shark. Give it to me." And he grabs the Akshay Patra, takes that shark and eats it. And says, ah, now I am satisfied. This one small piece of leaf of spinach has satisfied me. Thank you, Dharupadi. Now my hunger is gone. I am fully satisfied. Yashmin Tushte, Jagat. If Krishna is satisfied, everybody is satisfied. Ah, and then Krishna even burped. Uh. Thank you, thank you, Dharupadi. Such a beautiful meal. And then he called Bhim and said, Bhim, go and call Durvasmuni. Tell him Prasad is ready. No, it's good. Oh, thank you, Dharupadi. Tell him Prasad is ready. Now oh, Bhim is scared. <laughs> to tell durvasamuni that prasadam is ready he says uh, krishna but where is the prasad <laughs> you just go kaunteya pratijani go and declare that the prasad is ready go so bhim is scared to go so he tells nakul nakul you go 
Because who are going to go to get cars? <laughs> Nakul, you go. I am coming behind you. You go. Go. You go. Come on, come on. Come on. You go. I'll come behind you. So poor Nakul is going, <laughs> going to the river bank, Yamuna, and Bhim is with a gada going, going behind him. And here Krishna tells Draupadi, Draupadi, thank you for calling me for dinner. Thank you for the nice dinner. Now let me go back because Rukmini is waiting for me in Dwarka. So Krishna disappears. Hmm? Now here there is no food. And with full confidence, Nakul and Bhim are going there to call. Now over there, Durvasa Muni finishes his bath, three dips in the Yamuna, when Krishna eats the shark. And as soon as he comes out, uh, <laughs> Krishna burps, and here Durvasa Muni burps. Uh, and then 60,000 disciples all start burping. Uh. Now after they come out, they are supposed to do Gayatri. But before Gayatri, they have to do Ashaman. Durva Samuri says, I don't even have room to do Ashaman. I am so full. I don't know what happened. It's like I have eaten a whole mountain. Forget it. I cannot even do Ashaman. I am full. The disciples throw their Ashaman path. They say, even we cannot do Ashaman. We are so full. We are full till here. What happened? We cannot eat anything now. Even the thought of eating makes us nauseous. Oh, we are too full. Then Durva Samuri says, Oh, but poor Yudhishthir, he must have cooked. He must have cooked a full feast for us. What will happen to the feast? We will offend Yudhishthir Maharaj. If having self-invited ourselves, now if we don't honor the feast, we will be committing Vaishnava Aparad. Oh, 60,000 disciples. Do you remember? In the bygone years, I once offended someone like Yudhishthir. His name was Ambarish Maharaj. <laughs> Do you remember what happened to me? What is the effect of Vaishnava Aparad? The disciples, yes, Gurudev, we remember. You were gone for a year. <laughs> and they look at the horizon and they see Bhim coming with the Gada. <laughs> and the Gul. Durva Samuri says, now is the time, run! <laughs> And he was looking, and suddenly he sees his Durva Samur is running, his disciples are running away, and Bhim starts running behind them. Durva Samur looks behind, he says, Last time the Sudar sent Chakra changed me. This time it is me. So Krishna is saying, this flat rice will not only satisfy me, but it will satisfy oh, yes. the whole world. Then, <laughs> text 10. Iti mushtim sakrit jagdva Vitiyam jagdum adade Tavashi jagrehastam Tavashi jagrehastam Tatpara parameshtinaha Saying this, that this poha is what I was looking for. This will satisfy me and it will satisfy the whole universe. Krishna grabbed. That poha and ate a handful. Then Krishna took a second handful. There were four handfuls, right? Krishna took a second handful and was about to put in his mouth when Sri Rukmini Devi held Krishna's lotus hand and said, No, Swami, no, Swami, don't, don't, don't. You accepted one handful of that shipped rice, has completely satisfied me. Now I will personally go and give all the opulences to Sudama and his wife. I will personally do it. If you eat a second handful, then I will not know how to repay the debt to Sudama. And lifelong, I will become indebted to Sudama. So one is enough. One is enough. Now I will give all my opulence to Sudama. You don't have to eat a second one. Please don't eat. She stopped. She took hold of the hand. But our Acharyas, Shila Vishwana Chakrari Thakur, gives a beautiful commentary to this verse. Why did... Shrimati Rukmini Devi stopped Krishna from eating the second handful. He says that Rukmini was saying that this is such a priceless bhoga that your devotee Sudama brought 
and with such relish you grabbed when i cook you don't grab the food <laughs> but when sudama brought you grabbed the chipped rice and you ate there must be something special in it and now it has become mahaprasad because you ate it so she held the hand of krishna <laughs> then don't eat any more because if you eat i will not get any mahaprasad <laughs> Satyabhav will not get Mahaprasad. Your queens will not get Mahaprasad. Look, our maid servants are watching. They also want Mahaprasad. So leave some for us. That was the reason why Rukmini held Krishna's hand. Don't need any more. So sweet. She wanted Mahaprasad for everyone. <clears throat> yeah. <laughs> Just like Parvati Devi. Vimla Devi. Then Rukmini says, this is more than enough. Because this has satisfied you, all the world's wealth belongs to Sudama. I will personally give it. Don't worry. So Sudama, this is a chip rice was taken by Krishna. Remnants were taken by Rukmini Devi. And this, there was Mahaprasad distribution. <laughs> Food for life in Dwarka. <laughs> of chip rice <laughs> from Porbandar. That was begged. Hmm? Now, <clears throat> text number 12. Brahmanastam to Rajanim Ushitva Chutamandire Utva Pitva Sukhamene Atmanam Swargatam Yatha Atmanam Swargatam Yatha Sudama afterwards our Acharas describe that then Rukmini Satyabhama and other queens, they cooked a full feast for Sudama. And that was brought. And Krishna and Sudama sat together and they had their dinner together. Then all night, Sudama and Krishna, they spent time together. Talking, discussing, sharing their affection and love for each other. In this way, Sudama spent the whole night in Dwarka Puri. That Sudama who did not even have confidence that Krishna will recognize me. He thought maybe I will not be allowed inside the kingdom also. But he slept in the palace of Krishna. Spending time with his old friend. <clears throat> and then next day, verse number 13, next day, Sudama set off after being honored by Krishna. And he left very, very satisfied and pleased as he walked home along the road. And our Acharya explained that Krishna walked few miles with Sudama, walked him out of the kingdom to bid him farewell. This is the Vaishnava culture. When Vaishnavas come, we should receive them outside. And when they depart, we should walk them out to their, at least to their car. This is the Vaishnava culture. So Krishna himself is following this Vaishnava etiquette. He is walking um, Sudama, uh, our Acharya say, several miles. Krishna walked with him, holding his hand. And then finally, offered him pranam, thanked him for visiting and Sudama continued his journey. Now, in text 14, Sri Shukdev Goswami says, although apparently Sudama had not received any wealth, remember he came thinking that his poverty problem will be solved. <laughs> but he apparently got no wealth from Krishna because he didn't ask for it. He was too shy to ask. But why was he perfectly satisfied and happy as he returned home? Because of the way Krishna gave him love and hospitality. He was touched by Krishna's dealing. How Krishna kept awake all night, chatted with him, you know, stole the gift that he had brought and said, this has satisfied me completely, your poha. This love and affectionate dealings between Krishna and Sudama completely satisfied Sudama. So sweetness in relationships is more important than money or gifts. The sweetness. Imagine someone, you go to somebody's house and you know they are not happy that you have come. And they are just, okay, when are you going? Okay, you know, actually, Prabhuji, I have a seva, Prabhuji. Uh, thank you for coming, huh, Prabhuji. Uh, maybe 10 minutes I have to leave, Prabhuji. So we know that we are not welcome here. And then when we are going, they give us a gift. Oh, well, Prabhu, thank you anyway for coming. Here's a, here's a parting gift for you, Prabhu. Here is a, a gift for you. Take this gift. Okay, and we go. Now, the other scenario is we go to someone's house and they don't give us any gift. Maybe because they cannot afford to, for whatever reason. 
but they are genuinely happy that we have come and they just don't let us leave no you are not going i have to go i have to run an errand and i'll be back in half an hour you wait for you wait you stand for your own i'll be right back you have to wait you have we'll have lunch together i'm so happy i'm oh, would, would you like to come with me we'll run the errand together and then we'll come back we'll spend time together prabhu i'm so happy you have come now when you leave there is no gift given but the exchange was so filled with genuine affection and love that it completely satisfied and we can see it in the eyes in the face when someone is really happy to have us you know that is real friendship so sudama experienced that so sudama did not expect anything material he didn't expect any wealth from krishna what he wanted he got more than that and he was completely satisfied that my krishna he considers me a dear friend and he loves me so much bas nothing else matters that's all <laughs> now the two verses three verses 15 16 17 were the favorite of sri chaitanya mahaprabhu and verse number 16 is mentioned in sri chaitanya charitamrita also the very beautiful verses so we'll recite them together text 15 aho brahmanya devasya we need to call response अहो ब्रह्मण्य देवस्य कृष्टा ब्रह्मण्यता मया यद्दरिद्रा तमो लक्ष्मी आश्लिष्टो बिब्र तो रसी अहो ब्रह्मण्य देवस्य He is calling Krishna Brahmanya Devas, the Lord of the Brahmanas, because he is a Brahman, and how Krishna is his Lord, so he is addressing Krishna in a very personal way. Oh Krishna, you are my master. Oh Brahmanya Devas, yeah. I have today, till today, only in the Vedas I had read that you are Brahmanya Devas, yeah, that you are affectionate to the Brahmanas, but Krishna, today I experienced it. I experienced how much you are affectionate to the Brahmanas. so what was gnan has become vidyan mm. what was just knowledge has become realized knowledge today i have first had experience of how much you love the brahmanas indeed he who carries goddess of fortune on his chest lakshmi carries lakshmi on his chest ashlishto has embraced this daridra this poor beggar see the contrast lakshmi is the goddess of fortune the place where she resides you embrace this beggar to your chest where lakshmi resides krishna you are so merciful did i deserve to be embraced by your chest which is the abode of shri no i am shri hin i have no wealth at all but you embrace me to your chest and then text 16 is quoted by shri chaitanya mahaprabhu very beautiful verse we will to call response so that we get to chant and hear it twice text 16 क्वाहम दरिद्र पापीयान श्रीनिकेतन ब्रह्म बंधुर्ति बाहुभ्या पिरंभित सच ब्यूटिफुल वर्स सुदामा इज वॉकिंग होम from dwarkapuri to sudamapuri sudamapuri is just a broken down hut <laughs> the thatched roof also is breaking down crumbling he is walking from dwarkapuri to his kutir and he is thinking on the way so see when we go for pilgrimage while going sudama was thinking will krishna recognize me will i get to meet krishna will i get to speak to krishna he was completely krishna conscious going for the yatra he goes to dwarka yatra he is completely krishna conscious he is with krishna he is shedding tears of love for krishna he is with krishna and when he is coming back he is completely krishna conscious he is thinking of all these verses mm-hmm. while coming back so going to yatra krishna conscious in the yatra krishna conscious coming back from yatra krishna conscious so i was talking to one devotee he went for the kartik yatra so i said how was the flight said prabhu ji while going i watched three movies and while coming back i watched three movies <laughs> on the flight so see we have to be careful this dirty kaliyog is so bad they keep it right in front of you why would you put a screen in front of somebody's face 
they want us to watch it and everybody around you is watching even if your screen is shut off shut down <laughs> this is kali of my dear friends maya is everywhere and she's trying to get us we really have to be focused like shila bhakti tirtha swami mahara says we have to be spiritual warriors how we have to have the warrior mentality maya is attacking us and we are prabhupad soldiers we hold each other's hands we are together and we will fight together so devotees should travel together they should do narsimha aarti together on the flight they should eat krishna prasad together on the flight they should chant together on the flight they should do mangal aarti together on the flight that's the way to fight soldiers stay together we stay together we survive that's the leave no one behind these are the this is the motto of the soldiers and shila bhakti tirtha maharaj said we have to be spiritual warriors we are at war with maya so we are one platoon we have to be together and our commander is shila prabhupad we have to follow we have to obey and we have to let the soldiers train they do their training they do their drills they go to the range they shoot their weapons this is our weapon hare krishna hare krishna krishna krishna, 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 krishna hare 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 ram hare ram we have to equip ourselves with shrimad bhagavata hari katha hari kirtan vaishnav seva hari naam and keep ourselves as navy seals team 6 with the shelter of six goswamis of vrindavan with six types of loving exchanges with devotees with six types of enthusiasm utsaha nischaya dhairya tat tat and avoiding the six things that are damaging to the bhakti we have to be together once shila radha govind maharaj was asked why do you carry the bead bag always you are sitting on the vyasasan giving hari katha why you have the bead bag around your neck you are not even chanting right now Why carry the bead bag? Shri Radha Govind Maharaj says, "Why do the cops carry gun? Why do they carry their side arm, their pistol? It's not at every moment they are shooting, <laughs> but they keep it because whenever the opportunity comes, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare." Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Bad thoughts comes. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, 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 Rama,
we should remember this verse so vyasa puja offering should have at least three components it's very simple the first component should be kwaham daridra papiya we have to reflect on ourselves on our fallen state in the vyasa puja offering the first paragraph should be a genuine analysis of ourselves that i waste so much time i have no taste so many years have passed i don't think i am making any spiritual advancement we should express our genuine genuine heartfelt humility hmm? so how this sudama brahman is saying kwaham daridra papi and i am a sinful person i am a impoverished person so first paragraph of vyas puja offering we should analyze our fallen condition second paragraph ko krishna shri niketana and who is krishna he is the abode of the goddess of fortune in the second paragraph now we should glorify the spiritual master so first paragraph is little negative about ourselves second paragraph should be positive i am very fallen but my guru maharaj shila prabhupad you are so glorious and then we should describe the wonderful qualities of shri guru and shila prabhupad in the second paragraph of the vyas puja offering we should glorify shri guru shri krishna that you are so merciful shri chaitanya mahaprabhu is so merciful we should glorify them and in the third paragraph bahubhyam pariramhita and even though i am so fallen you have given me your causeless mercy in the third paragraph we should reflect on the gifts that we have received from shri guru and we should make a resolve that because this gift i have received even though i am unqualified i promise you dear gurudev i renew my vows today i promise you that i will try to do better i will try to become a better version of myself this is vyas puja offering first paragraph our personal analysis how fallen we are second paragraph glory of shri guru shri gauranga and third paragraph reflecting on the mercy that we have received throughout the year from shri gurudev and what we intend to do now this is vyas puja is it simple hmm? so he is saying even though i am so fallen bahu bhyam with his bahu with his arms parirambhita he embraced me so now we know the meaning with our full heartfelt offering let us recite this verse together call response once kwaham daridra papiya va krishna shri niketana va krishna shri niketana brahma bandhur iti smaham kamhubhyam parirambhita ha next verse निवासित प्रिया जुष्टे पर्यंके भातरो यथा महिष्या विजित श्रांतो बाल व्यजन हस्तया सुदाम इज थिंकिंग ही ट्रीटेड मी भातरो यथा ही ट्रीटेड मी लाइक अ ब्रदर my krishna even though i am nothing he treated me like a brother what is the proof paryanke he made me sit on his own bed like a family member he brought me inside his bedroom like a family member made me sit and not only him but vyajana hastaya his wife the goddess of fortune she is mahishya mahishya means she is the rani she is the queen of dwarka the queen of dwarka was fanning me who am i the queen of dwarka was fanning me he is remembering all this as he is going home thinking he treated me like a brother krishna is so wonderful and then he is in the next verse verse 18 he is thinking that in the interest of time we will not read the verses now because it's getting late but he is thinking that krishna worshiped me even though i am such a small person he worshiped me he washed my feet and then he says that all this was possible only because i am a devotee is giving all credit to bhakti devi because remember bhakti atushyati kevalam nasha guna hai bhakti priyo madhav krishna is controlled only by bhakti so he says because well krishna did all this because i am a sold out devotee of krishna that's why krishna is bhakti is the root cause of everything and who is the root of bhakti bhaje nityanandam bhajana tarukandam niravadhi <laughs> nityananda ram ki yeah. and nityananda prabhu is guru tatva for us shila prabhu pad and our guru parampara then he says that even i am so fallen fallen wretch um krishna gave me so much mercy but then the question comes why krishna did not offer me any gold coins 
Why Krishna did not give me his golden necklace? Why Krishna, Krishna did not give me some pearls and diamonds? He could have given me. After all, that cloth bag in which I carried the poha is coming back empty. The culture is that we don't send anything empty. If someone sends some mithai, some sweets in a dabba, when we send it back, we fill it with something. Hmm? <laughs> but Krishna sent my cloth bag empty. <laughs> it's empty. So Sudama is saying, why? Krishna would have easily given me, taken out one ring and given me as a gift. That would have been so valuable. Probably I would not have to work and do Madhukari for the rest of my life. <laughs> it's so valuable. But Krishna did not give me anything. Why? Sudama is thinking. Why Krishna gave me nothing? Sudama is thinking because Krishna knows that if I get to money, if I become wealthy, I will forget him. Now I am thinking of him because I am poverty stricken. If opulence and wealth comes to me, facilities come to me, then I will be sitting on a massage chair and servants will be massaging me. Cooks will be cooking for me and my wife. I will be wearing nice clothes and I will completely forget Krishna. I will become complacent in my bhakti. My Krishna knows this. That's why he's not giving me any money. Krishna did the right thing by not giving me any money. Sudama is convinced and he's thinking like this in this verse. <laughs> Then 21, 22, 23, Shri Shukdev Goswami tells Maharaj Parikshit, thinking like this, now Sudama came to his thatched hut. And he thought, maybe I have come to the wrong place. <laughs> <laughs> maybe I have lost my way. Because he saw that the place where his broken down thatched hut was, whose roof was about to fall, he maybe he had promised us, when I come back, that's the next project. We have to, we have to fix the roof <laughs> of the hut. It's crumbling in. So he comes there and he sees rows of palaces. He thinks he has made a U-turn. He thinks he has come back to Dwarka Puri. <laughs> really? He feels, oh, this is Dwarka again. What happened? Did I come back to Dwarka? This doesn't look like the place where I used to live. He saw beautiful palaces just like Dwarka. Splendorous courtyards and gardens. There were flocks of cooing birds. There were beautiful ponds with beautiful lotus flowers and other flowers. And there were many men and women servants who were also very opulently dressed. Ready to serve Sudama. And when he went there, Sudama asked them, Whoa, what is this? What subdivision is this? <laughs> and they told him, Prabhu, this is Sudama Puri. This is your abode and we are your servants. They told him. And then I will just tell the story because now time is very late. Then he saw a beautiful lady who resembled his wife, but <laughs> it was as if she had done the best makeup in the world, the best clothes, everything. He could not, he could, he could hardly recognize. There was some resemblance to his wife. A very beautiful lady who looked like a demigoddess came and she was followed behind by maid servants. She came and these servants who were outside, they told Sudama, Prabhu, this is your wife. <laughs> well, otherwise Sudama would not have recognized. <laughs> Prabhu, this is your wife. And Sudama is still the same. <laughs> Torn clothes, <laughs> veins showing up, emaciated body, and this beautiful queen who's coming is my wife. And the wife comes, offers obeisances to Sudama, and says, Pati Dev, I have been waiting for you. Welcome home. Please come. Uh -huh. <laughs> Who's home? Prabhu, this is your home. This is Sudama Puri. Just like Krishna has Dwarka Puri, he has made Sudama Puri for us. As soon as the wife says this and Sudama steps inside, he also gets a complete bodily transformation. His body becomes healthy, youthful, and full of vigor and vitality as soon as he enters inside the palace. So our Acharya say, when his wife was transformed, why was Sudama's body not transformed? Srila Vishwana Chakra Thakur says, because the wife would not have recognized him. <laughs> Sudama recognized his wife because the servants were there to prom. This is your wife. But wife would not, the chaste wife would not have recognized her husband. 
if sudama's body so krishna waited until he stepped inside the palace then krishna changed his body <laughs> made it very youthful and healthy <laughs> then <clears throat> it is described that sudama and his wife they glorified krishna for the rest of their lives and they accepted the gifts that krishna had given and our acharyas ask a question why did krishna not tell sudama that he is going to give him this gift he would have told him sudama you go back and uh, tomorrow your thatched hut will be transformed into palace and you will have rows of smaller palaces for your servants so they can serve you day and night everything will be supplied you don't need whole foods the grocer will appear in your house you don't need cooks the cooks will cook for you you just sit back and relax life is a lifelong cruise vacation now for you why krishna did not tell this to sudama our acharyas say because krishna was embarrassed of the gift he gave sudama please listen to this look at krishna's heart krishna is thinking that sudama gave me more than what he had he had nothing he went out here and his wife begged for me they got four handfuls of poha and they gave me 100% of it they gave me everything they gave me more than what they had and krishna is thinking am i giving sudama everything, everything? Well, everything belongs to Krishna. Am I giving him Dwarka? Am I giving him Vaikuntha? Am I giving him everything? No. But Sudama gave me everything. So Sudama is better than me. And the gift that I am giving him is insignificant. This is Krishna's heart. That's why Krishna is na paaraye ham. I cannot repay you. Am bhakta paradhin. This is Krishna's heart. Shila Chakravarti Pada has written like this. Krishna is thinking, my gift is so insignificant. I am embarrassed. You want to tell Sudama that I gave you this gift. Sometimes if we give a very expensive gift, we write our name from so and so. Instead also from so and so, so they will remember. We give a clock also will write from so and so. This clock was gifted on this day. We give a silver vessel, we'll carve on it. So it can never be taken out. Supreme Bhakt. We write a date and we write our name. For all time to come. Let them remember that I gave this silver pot. But when we give a terrible gift, then we don't write our name. <laughs> we'll just go and we'll keep it. And we'll say, Prabhuji, we had brought a gift for you. We kept it there in the, among other gifts, somewhere, somewhere anonymous. <laughs> Krishna felt like that. No, no, let me give an anonymous gift. I'm too embarrassed. This Sudama loves me so much. He and his wife gave me everything they have. And what I'm giving him, I'm just giving him some little buildings. Insignificant. I own everything. I'm not even giving him 1% of what I own. He gave me 100% of what he owns. 100% contribution. And I'm giving not even 1% contribution. Because my positions are unlimited. So this is Krishna's heart. And in this way, Sudama and his wife, they lived a life of Krishna consciousness, never touched by any material pride because of the possessions that they have. And now let us see the last verse, verse number 41. I just accelerated through because of time. Text 41. Etad Brahmanya Devasya. Etad Brahmanya Devasya. Shrutva Brahmanya Tamnaraha. Labdha Bhavo Bhagavati. Karma Bandhat Vimuchate. So Sudama and his wife lived like that, very humble. And in the previous verse, verse number 40, it is mentioned. They enjoyed a life of comfort because Krishna wanted them to. When Krishna wanted them to be poor, they were the poorest. When Krishna wanted them to be wealthy, they were the wealthiest, as wealthy as Dwarka. So, the way Krishna wants us to keep. And then they lived their whole life like that, filled with gratitude for Krishna. But in the verse number 40, in the end, Shukdev Goswami says, in the end, they went back to the spiritual world. Sudama and his wife, they went back to the spiritual world. Because they never forgot Krishna. Always filled with gratitude for Krishna. 
And in this verse that we read, verse number 41, Shri Shukdev Goswami gives us the fruit of hearing this pastime, the Fala Shruti. Shukdev Goswami says, The Lord always shows Brahmana's special favor. Etad Brahmana Devasya. Anyone who hears this account, Shrutva, anyone who hears this account of Krishna's kindness to the Brahmanas, Shrutva Brahmanyata Naraha. Anyone who hears this pastime of Sudama receiving the kindness of Krishna will Labdha Bhavo Bhagavati. They will develop Bhav Bhakti for Krishna. Anyone who hears this pastime will get Krishna Prem. And Karma Bandha Vimuchate. And they will become completely free from the bondage of karma, material world. So anybody who hears this pastime will get Krishna Prem. And they will be freed from this material entanglement. I wish that astrologer had read this chapter. <laughs> but half knowledge is very dangerous. Therefore, Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita, Asheshata. I am giving you this knowledge in full. After knowing this, nothing more will remain for you to know. Therefore, we should read Srila Prabhupada's books in entirety. So, Srila Prabhupada ki, Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Vitai Gaur, Hari So, this is the Thank you very much, JD. What is Hare Krishna? Are there any? Yes, yes, Prabhu. No. Can we give the? I just wanted to thank you for really making the pastimes that you just totally visually like. I felt like I was there. It was just very ecstatic. So thank you. I do have two questions and a reflection. One is being a cook. I'm trying to understand, is the chip rice flat rice or is it just rice that is in broken pieces, like uncooked rice? It was the the chipped rice, flat rice. Poha, 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 poha. Good. And, uh, so usually the whole rice is considered precious. And when beggars come, people usually don't give the rice because it's precious commodity. But the chipped rice is considered low class. So if you want to give someone, some beggar comes and we want to give, then they give chipped rice. It's not as high class as real rice. It is chipped rice. It's considered less expensive than real rice. Okay. So being a beggar, he was given something that was cheap. But Krishna accepted that. Okay. And why is it that um, Sudama and his wife, they had no kids? <laughs> I don't Krishna. It is not. In all the commentaries that I read, um, in Srila Sanatan Goswami's Brihat Bhagavat Toshini, Srila Jiva Goswami's Lagu Bhagavat Toshini and Shila Vishwanath Chakrari Thakur Sarasa Darshani Tika. Because as a child, I had also seen on the television that they had hungry, crying children. But in my reading of Srimad Bhagavatam and all the Acharya's commentaries, I did not find any evidence that Sudama and his wife had any children. So maybe it is just a dramatization that they had children. But to answer your question, why they did not have children, Bhagavatam doesn't mention anything like that. That they, why they did not have children, but there is no mention that they had any children. Yes. So I don't know. <laughs> Your pastime of the flying in the airplane while you're giving us some good instruction, it reminded me of a time, 1976, when <laughs> ISKCON. <laughs> rented a whole Air India flight and all of the devotees from LA and New York and in between, they were all on the flight. We had Mongol Arctic. Wow. We had, okay. And not only that, the New York temple and the LA temple both cooked a extremely opulent oh. <laughs> that was packed nicely and served out all the, you know, um, Waitress, I mean the stewardess. 
we're basically, you know, really taking care of the devotees nicely. And we had our own Mongol art take the whole morning program. Wow. In the flight. In the flight. I'm looking wow. at the top. Hope that someday we'll do we'll that. Yeah. yeah. Why can't we do this? Yeah. So amazing. Hare Krishna. Bro, this is so incredible. Kamalini Mataji wants to say something also. So was this the reflection you wanted to share? Yeah. Thank you so much, Afu Prabhu. Hare Krishna. Yeah. 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 So on that slide, um, Vishnu Dham Swami led the Mongol Arti, they led him to use the megaphone that they oh, made. Wow. And we had Gordon Kai babies in the front and we circumambulated. So <laughs> up and down the aisles and everyone was jumping and the plane was was jumping too. <laughs> I was wondering how was the pilot feeling? <laughs> Air India became Air Goloka. <laughs> um, every announcement they say, Hare Rama, Hare Krishna, please pass in your seat back. <laughs> Uh, 